Deuteronomy chapters 1 and 2. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Tophel, and Laban, and Haziroth, and Dizahab. There are eleven days' journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. And it came to pass in the fortieth year, in the eleventh month, on the first day of the month, the Moses spake unto the children of Israel, according to all that the Lord had given him in commandment unto them. After he had slain Sihon, the king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, which dwelt at Ashtaroth, in Edrei, on this side Jordan, in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law, saying, The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you, and take your journey, and go to the mount of the Amorites, and unto all the places nigh thereunto, in the plain, in the hills, in the vale, and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. And I spake unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. The Lord your God hath multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are, and bless you as he hath promised you. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance, and your burden, and your strife? Take you wise men and understanding, and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. And ye answered me, and said, The thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. For I took the chief of your tribes, wise men, and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, and the stranger that is with him. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at that time all things which ye should do. And when we departed from Horeb, we went through all the great and terrible wilderness, which ye saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites, as the Lord our God commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said unto you, Ye are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God doth give unto us. Behold, the Lord thy God hath set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. And ye came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search us out the land, and bring us word again by what way we must go up, and to what cities we shall come. And the saying pleased me well, and I took twelve men of you, one of a tribe. And they turned and went up into the mountain, and came into the valley of Eshcol, and searched it out. And they took of the fruit of the land in their hands, and brought it down unto us, and brought us word again, and said, It is a good land which the Lord God doth give unto us. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. And ye murmured in your tents, and said, because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt, to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our heart, saying, The people is greater and taller than we are. The cities are great and walled up to heaven, and moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. Then I said unto you, Dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you according to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. And in the wilderness, where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bare thee, as a man doth bear his son, in all the way that ye went, until ye came into this place. Yet in this thing ye did not believe the Lord your God, who went in the way before you, to search you out a place to pitch your tents in, in fire by night, to show you by what way ye should go, and in a cloud by day. And the Lord heard the voice of your words, and was wroth, and aware, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land, which I swear 
to give unto your fathers. Save Caleb, the son of Jephuni, he shall see it. And to him will I give the land that he hath trodden upon, and to his children, because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Also the Lord was angry with me for your sake, saying, Thou also shalt not go in thither. But Joshua, the son of Nun, which stands before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, which ye said it should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you, and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Then ye answered and said unto me, We have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight, according to all that the Lord our God commanded us. And when ye had girded on every man his weapons of war, ye were ready to go up into the hill. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest ye be smitten before your enemies. So I spake unto you, and ye would not hear, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, and went presumptuously up into the hill. And the Amorites which dwelt in that mountain came out against you, and chased you, as bees do, and destroyed you in Seir, even unto Hormah. And ye returned and went before the Lord, but the Lord would not hearken to your voice, nor give ear unto you. So ye abode in Kadesh many days, according unto the days that ye abode there. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward. And commanded thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. Meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land. No, not so much as a foot breadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Ye shall buy meat of them for money, that ye may eat, and ye shall also buy water of them for money, that ye may drink. For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through the great wilderness. These forty years the Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. And when we passed by it from our brethren and the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, through the way of the plain of Elath, the, and from Ezion Geber, we turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee other land for a possession, because I have given Ar unto the children of Lot for a possession. The Emus dwelt therein in times past, a people great, and many, and tall, as the Anakims, which also were accounted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them the Emims. The Horims also dwelt in Seir before time, but the children of Esau succeeded them, when they had destroyed them from before them, and dwelt in their stead, as Israel did unto the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them. Now rise up, said I, and get you over the brook Zered. And we went over to the brook Zered. And the space in which we came from Kadesh Barnea, until we were come over the brook Zered, was thirty and eight years, until all the generation of the men of war were wasted out from among the host, as the Lord swore unto them. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them, to destroy them from among the host, until they were consumed. So it came to pass, when all the men of war were consumed and dead from among the people, that the Lord spake unto me, saying, Thou art to pass over through Ar, the coast of Moab, this day. And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them. For I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in an old time, and the Ammonites called them Zamzumims, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them, and dwelt in their stead. As he did the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Horims from before them, and they succeeded them, and dwelt in their stead even unto this day. And the Avims which dwelt in Hazirim, even unto Azza, the Kaftorims, which came forth out of Kaftor, destroyed them, and dwelt in their stead. Rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over the river Arnon. Behold, I have given into thine hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. 
begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven, who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. And I sent messengers out of the wilderness of Kedemoth unto Sion king of Heshbon with words of peace, saying, Let me pass through thy land. I will go along by the highway. I will neither turn unto the right hand nor unto the left. Thou shalt sell me meat for money that I may eat, and give me water for money that I may drink. Only I will pass through on my feet. As the children of Esau which dwell in Seir, and the Levites which dwell in Ar did unto me. Until I shall pass over Jordan into the land which the Lord our God giveth us. But Sion the king of Heshbon would not let us pass by him. For the Lord thy God hardened his spirit, and made his heart obstinate, that he might deliver him into thy hand as appeareth this day. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I begun to give Sihon and his land before thee, begin to possess, that thou mayest inherit his land. And then Sihon came out against us, he and all his people, to fight a Jahaz. And the Lord our God delivered him before us, and we smote him and his sons and all his people. And we took all his cities at that time, and utterly destroyed the men and the women and the little ones of every city. We left none to remain. And with the cattle we took for a prey unto ourselves, and the spoil of the cities which we took. From Aroer, which is by the brink of the river of Arnon, and from the city that is by the river, even unto Gilead, there was not one city too strong for us. The Lord our God delivered all unto us. Only unto the land of the children of Ammon thou camest not, nor unto any place of the river Jabbok, nor unto the cities in the mountains, nor unto whatsoever the Lord our God forbade us. Psalm 62 to the chief musician, to Jedithan, a psalm of David. Truly my soul waiteth upon God, from him cometh my salvation. He is only my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall shall ye be, as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth. But they curse inwardly. Selah. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 16 through 20. A gracious woman retaineth honor, and a strong man retaineth riches. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that stilleth righteousness shall be a sure reward. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. They that are of a frowered heart are abomination to the Lord, but such as are upright in their way are his delight. The Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. Again, one preparing himself to sail, and about to pass through the raging waves, calls upon a piece of wood more rotten than the vessel that carrieth him. For verily desire of grain device that, and the workman built it by his skill. But thy providence, O Father, governeth it, for thou hast made a way in the sea, and a safe path in the waves, showing that thou canst save from all danger, yea, though a man went to sea without art. Nevertheless, thou wouldest not that the works of thy wisdom should be idle, and therefore do men commit their lies to a small piece of wood, and passing the rough sea in a weak vessel are saved. For in the old time also, when the proud giants perished, the hope of the world governed by thy hand escaped in a weak vessel, and left to all ages a seed of generation. For blessed is the wood whereby righteousness cometh. But that which is made with hands is cursed, as well it as he that made it. He, because he made it, and it, because being corruptible, it was called God.
for the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful to God. For that which is made shall be punished together with him that made it. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles, there shall be a visitation, because in the creature of God there become an abomination, and stumbling blocks to the souls of men, and a snare to the feet of the unwise. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication, and the invention of them the corruption of life. For neither were they from the beginning, nor shall they be forever. For by the vainglory of men they entered into the world, and therefore shall they come shortly to an end. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning, when he hath made an image of his child soon taken away, now honored him as a god, which was then a dead man, and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law, and graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings, whom men could not honor in presence, because they dwelt afar off. They took the counterfeit of his vigis from afar, and made an express image of a king whom they honored, to the end that by this their frowardness they might flatter him that was absent, as if he were present. Also, the singular diligence of the artificer did help to set forward the ignorant to more superstition. For he, peradventure, willing to please one in authority, forced all his skill to make the resemblance of the best fashion. And so the multitude, allured by the grace of the work, took him now for a god, which a little before was but honored. And this was an occasion to deceive the world, for men, serving either calamity or tyranny, they ascribe unto stones and stocks the incommunicable name. Moreover, this was not enough for them, that they erred in the knowledge of God, but whereas they lived in the great war of ignorance, those so great plagues called they peace. For whilst they slew their children in sacrifices, or used secret ceremonies, or made revelings of strange rites, they kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled, but either one slew another traitorously, or grieved him by adultery. So that there reigned in all men, without exception, blood, manslaughter, theft, and dissimulation, corruption, unfaithfulness, tumults, perjury, disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good turns, defiling of souls, changing of kind, disordered marriages, adultery, and shameless uncleanness. For the worshipping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. For either they are mad when they be merry, or prophesy lies, or live unjustly, or else lightly forswear themselves. For insomuch as their trust is in idols, which have no life, though they swear falsely, yet they look not to be hurt. Howbeit for both causes shall they be justly punished, both because they thought not well of God, giving heed unto idols, and also unjustly swore in deceit, despising holiness. For it is not the power of them by whom they swear, but it is the just vengeance of sinners that punish always the offense of the ungodly.